to up to speed so that they would be in a position to to serve the people serve the people and uh look at verse look at verse two uh so the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said it would it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of god in order to wait on tables now i just want to deal with that for a few minutes wait on tables what they were what they're referring to uh that if if they're serving the people feeding the people then they would not be able to be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in order for them to uh, free themselves up to share the gospel, they, uh, they, they set out to assign the responsibilities to individuals to work at supporting and helping to feed the needy. Look at verse three. He said, brothers and sisters, Choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn these, we would, we will, we will turn this responsibility over to them and give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. In other words, if the if the apostles, if their ultimate focus was just on feeding the people, that they would not be instrumental at uh, going out preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. So they assign, uh, was looking to assign, I should say, seven men to assist in carrying out the functions of taking care of the of the church of the of, of, of the of the people of God. And that's some real good, real good teaching in scripture. And you know, that is the you know responsibility today of, uh, of our deacons to assist in supporting the ministry and helping helping uh, families and the and the needy among the church. So he says, brothers and sisters, choose seven men among you. So so again they there are multitudes of, of, of individuals that were following the apostles, multitude that were following the apostles. And so they selected seven leaders among them. And these leaders, they're, they're one of the requirements, and it, it makes, well, actually there are several requirements, but they say, choose seven men from among you who are, here's one of the requirements, known to be full of the spirit and the second requirement who have wisdom. We know that wisdom is very important. Uh, there's a lot of bad decisions that are made due to the lack of wisdom. Did you know the word of God tells us that if any man, if any man lacketh wisdom, let him ask it of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Meaning as much wisdom as you want, you can ask it of God. In fact, God doesn't care if you want wisdom, uh, as if you're asking for wisdom every day. The scripture says he upbraideth not, meaning he will not get upset because every time he looks around, you're saying, God, I need more wisdom. God, I need more wisdom. In fact, he invites you and I to, to seek him for wisdom. And so they were looking for seven men who were, who were filled with the Holy Spirit and that had great wisdom, great wisdom, great wisdom. You know, wisdom, wisdom is something very special. Uh, there are wisdom that you get just for being, for getting older. You know, I often say to myself, if I knew what I know now, I would have done some things differently. You know, or if I was 20 years younger with the wisdom that I have right now, 
I would be better off than I am. In essence, when, when people make statements like that, they are recognizing that, the, that you've acquired wisdom just from uh, living and, and getting older, but God can grant us wisdom uh, without even waiting till we get older. God can grant us, grant us great, great wisdom. So the scripture tells us to, 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 uh, to not, if, if we lack wisdom, Ask it of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. So we see the two requirements of being a, a, a deacon, uh, one that supports and help the ministry. They're full of the spirit and wisdom. Look at the next sentence there. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we will give our, our, we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the of the word of God. Look at verse five. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, uh, Prochorus, uh, Nakana, uh, Timon, and Pharmanus and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism, they presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to their faith. Now there's a, there's a few things here. We see them, they've, they've appointed these seven and immediately, immediately they were released to go and take care of the work of the, of the ministry. You know, it is, a, it is an honor uh, to just be able to focus on, just focus on, on, on ministry. Uh, my ministry has been, uh, unique over the years. I've been more of a, a, a bivocational uh, pastor. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul was bi bivocational. He, uh, he took care of the, uh, he, he, he made tents and he uh, used the opportunity uh, to raise money that he supported himself in the ministry. He supported them. He worked and supported the ministry. And my ministry and my calling that God has called me to thus far has been just that. I've had the opportunity over the years to, to be devoted to the ministry uh, full time, uh, uh, you know, a, a few times, but still had to continue to support uh, myself uh, as well as my family and help uh, take care of the ministry. So again, God calls uh, pastors and ministers and have different, different callings on, on, on all of our lives. But the apostles made it clear that if they are able to be dedicated to the ministry, dedicated to praying and studying and, uh, and, and sharing the word of God, that God is able to respond even greater because they're out there doing evangelism and doing very, 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 very powerful things, very, very powerful things in, 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 the, in the scripture. Uh, look at verse seven and, and you, can see the, you can see the results of this explosive move of God because these apostles dedicated themselves to praying and teaching and preaching the word of God. Notice how, notice how the word of God just explodes. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples, these were the followers, these were the followers, the followers of the, of, of, of the, of the people, of, of the people of faith. The number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith, obedient to the faith. So we're going to, 
we're going to start right here and I want to just open up the lines for some 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 input as a, this this just beautiful move of God when the when the apostles assigned responsibility for taking care of the needs of the people that dedic that allowed them to be dedicated to spreading the gospel message the gospel message when the gospel message goes forth it has miracles uh, embedded in the gospel. They're miracles. Some people just need to hear the word of God. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Some people just need to hear the word of God and they'll be saved immediately. Hear the word of God and they'll be healed immediately. Be in the presence of the word of God and they're delivered immediately. As long as the word of God go forth, it will set out, the scripture says, to accomplish that, that it is designed to accomplish. That whatever God wants done, when the word of God goes out, it will accomplish whatever God intends for it to accomplish. Want to get some feedback, want to get some comments, want to get some thoughts, right, before we're kind of like at the halfway point, before we get to the next part of our Bible study this evening. Anyone, anyone, go right ahead real quickly, please. Any thoughts, any thoughts? Good to see you all. Good to see you all on with us here this evening. Amen, good to see you brother, brother, brother Young and uh, brother Bobby and Sister Carol and, and uh, several others. Good to see you all here. Um, any thoughts, go right ahead, please. Any thoughts? Amen. Amen. Just just turn on your turn on your mic and speak if you if looking you're at the scripture that we were looking at. Like, sorry, I kind of came in late. Yeah, we're at chapter six. I'm sorry. We're at chapter six. We just covered the first part of chapter, first part of chapter six. Uh, from verses one through seven in uh, Acts. Acts chapter six. Okay. Any any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? Very good. All right, we're gonna move. We're gonna we're gonna move on again. We we we've already established that there were seven uh, individuals that the apostles selected uh, to become uh, leaders to assist them uh, in carrying out the work of the ministry and to take care of the, the needs of the, uh, of the, of the widows and, and those that had, uh, had various needs. But then, but then something happened, something happened, people of God. And, and we need to be mindful of it while we live in a country right now where for the most part, that we are able to, uh, we're able to speak, uh, we're able to uh, share our faith, we're able to uh, uh, go out and, and, and preach publicly and, and uh, do various things that, uh, that in some countries we aren't able to do. We, just, we have freedom of our faith. I, I hate to say freedom of religion, but freedom to, you know, share our, our faith. Now, sometimes there are parameters that they continue to seek to put on us. But, but I, I say that as an intro to, uh, to verse, beginning at verse eight, because we're gonna see something, we're gonna see something take a, take a turn uh, that uh, many of us will say a turn, for the, a turn for the worse. The scripture says in verse eight, now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power performed great wonders and signs among the people. You know, some folks often say, where, you know, where's the signs? Where's the wonders? And my response uh, to that is that the signs and the wonders are here. The signs and the wonders are uh, Many of us are have seen some signs and wonders. Well, some signs and wonders has occurred even this day, but uh, we were not sensitized. We are not looking for them, and we 
miss them. Or when they came, we called them different things. We say, oh, what a coincidence. Oh, uh, oh, I was lucky. Oh, could you believe what just happened? And, and so often these, these, these signs and these wonders, they are there. The scriptures tells us, uh, we've been promised. God says signs and wonders will follow those who believe. The Bible says his goodness, his grace, and his mercy shall always follow us. Amen. So, so the signs and the wonders, they are there. The question is, have we sensitized ourselves enough? And we sense that time, because what I have noticed when I'm when I am meditating, when I am really digging in deep with God, I see things that normally I would not see. What that tells me is that that myself as well as you, we have to become sensitized to to God's wonders, God's signs, because they are they are there. They are there. He, he wouldn't say that they will follow us if they would not be there. So we see in the life of Stephen that he performed great wonders and signs among the people. Notice in verse 9, opposition arose, however, from members from the synagogue of freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the province of uh, Sicilia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke, as he spoke. So we see here Stephen uh, is speaking boldly, you know, sharing his faith and what have you. Look at verse 11. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. In essence, what we see here, they uh, decided to lie against, uh, a lie on, on God's man. And so they, again, they secretly persuaded some men to say, uh, I mean, it's not that it happened, but to say that he was, uh, he was making slanders and blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Now with that, look at verse 12. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produce false witnesses who testify. These fellows never stop speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that this that his face was like the face of an angel. So we see here uh, Stephen uh, being a man of God. When you look at in verse five, you look at when they selected the seven men to to assist in uh, in working with the people of God, that Stephen was one of those that were selected. But there was a special, special anointing on him to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. And we see him doing just that. I wonder if any of you uh, here, I wonder if any of you have, uh, have been lied about, lied on, uh, that someone just you know, told a lie on you. You can, you can react. That you can react to that. If someone had told a lie on you, you can react with a thumbs up. Because I, I, I wonder uh, if, uh, if I'm the only one that that has happened to. <laughs> but I want to say if you live long on this earth, that, uh, that people will tell lies on you. People will make up things that you did not do. People will uh, say things that does not, does not represent you. 
And, and that was the case right here. They, they, they lied on, on, on Stephen and said that Stephen was, was, was preaching against Moses, uh, that, that, that Stephen was, 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 was preaching against uh, uh, the, uh, of God, that he was speaking, uh, speaking against God. And, and they did that. They did that to, to turn the hearts of the people away from Peter and the, not Peter, from Stephen and the work that he was doing uh, for the, and the work that he was doing for the Lord. So, you know, even in, even in ministry, when you're, you know, you're doing a great work for the Lord and seeking to do your very best for the Lord, that people will come and will falsely accuse you or doing things like uh, false, false accuse you of doing things as was the case with, with Stephen. I wonder if any of you can share a, a word or testimony of how maybe you were uh, falsely accused of something and God just miraculously stepped in and provided you with some relief. Any, anyone with a, a, an example or a testimony or something like that you'd like to share with the group, go right ahead. Anyone go right ahead. You guys are a quiet, quiet group tonight. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone go right ahead. But you know, if, if, if we live, if we continue to live long enough on this earth, we all will have uh, experiences like that. Uh, we live long enough on this earth uh, as, uh, as things begin to change, as some of the persecution of the church begin to ramp up, that we too will begin to experience some of the things that Stephen and these apostles experienced as a result of proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ. We have to understand that this message, the message of Jesus Christ, is a powerful message. It's a message so often sometimes when when, when we are sharing it, we may not see the results immediately because it's like, you know, sharing the word of God is like planting a seed. When you plant a seed, you have to give time for it to go through its germination process before it comes out of the ground, before it begins to bear forth fruit. You got to be patient with it. And so the, the, the word of God is like that. And so the best thing, the best thing we can offer anyone in our society today is the word of God. If all you can tell a person every day is Jesus loved them. If all you can tell a person every day is that God loves you. If all you can tell a person every day that Jesus saved me and he can save you. Those are some of the most powerful words you can ever, you can ever share with an unbeliever. Some years ago, while I was in the uh, in the in the Marine Corps, uh, I was the only Christian in the office, and the uh, guys in the office used to play all kind of games, and uh, and uh, and I would get because I did not participate uh, in some of the things that many of them did they were many of them on fridays would get together and they would go to the you know the girly clubs the brothels and everything and i would stay in the dorm and um, read my bible and fellowship with those and uh they didn't they didn't like me for the mere fact that i didn't participate in the things that they were participating in they didn't like me for the mere fact that I didn't go out with them and get just, you know, filthy, filthy drunk and unable to find my way back to the barracks. So, I mean, it's those kind of things that uh, uh, they did not like. But I'll never forget this people of God and God is, God is my witness. My last week there, my sergeant came up to me and he says to me, I think I was like a, I was like a corporal. Uh, for those of you that have been in the military, know what those titles stand for, but uh, I'm not going to try to uh, explain them all. But I was a corporal. I was like a leader, but what they call a non-commissioned non officer. 
And, uh, and so as a result, he came up to me and he says, you know, uh, before you leave, I'd like to go with you to church. And when I heard that, I fell out of my, I practically fell out of my seat. He said, we have done everything we could possibly do to sway you in our direction. And he says, you've, you've not budged. And he said these words, he said, you know, whatever they're teaching you at that church, uh, I like to go and see what it's all about. And so he came with me to a Sunday night service in uh, this little town in, uh, in North Carolina called Jacksonville, North Carolina. He came to me uh, to this church. And at the end of this service, we had an invitation where folks would come forth and give their life to the Lord. And I used to work the altar there at the church. And I looked to my far left, and there was Staff Sergeant Ayala, is his name, um, on his knees just crying out to the Lord, giving his life to the Lord. And so with all of the persecution that I received from him, when I saw him kneel and give his life to the Lord, I felt in my heart, I said, it was worth it. It was worth it to see a soul saved. So there is power in us living out the Christian life. The scripture tells us that we are epistles read of men, meaning there are people that will never ever pick up a pick up a Bible and, and read it. They'll never pick up a Bible and read it, but they read our lives every day. And so this is why we have to be very careful to be, do the very best we can to live a good quality Christian life because there are people that are not picking up the Bible, but they're reading, they can read our lives. Amen. So that's uh, chapter chapter six of uh, the book of Acts on, on Stephen. Want to see if I can get a few few uh, closing uh, thoughts and comments from one or two of you on the line this evening. Just uh, just op just turn on your mic, turn on your mic, and we'll be happy to hear from you. We just just got a, a few more minutes, few more minutes on the on the air, but love to hear from one or two of you or Maybe one of you want to just share what you have gleaned from our Bible study this evening. Any one of you, go right ahead. Yeah, this is Bobby. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was uh, I was driving and uh, on my way from my son's house, and I came on just a little bit late. But uh, I I was just thinking when you were talking about uh, instances where uh, something miraculous happened to you. And you know, we we say, man, how did that happen? Or, um, um, goodness gracious, what happened? How did that? What what? How did you get here? You know. And I, I was thinking back to when I was in uh, middle school, and I was about to get get whooped by a couple of guys get ready to whoop me and take my lunch. And uh, <laughs> I don't know where the guy came, came from, but he came from, came out of nowhere. And uh, he stood there with me and uh, was saved my lunch and my money that day. <laughs> so uh, I, I just, even, you know, stuff like that just happened, um, you know, in school. Um, and, and I'm sure I can't think of, I'm sure a lot of it has happened, you know, since I've been a grown man, uh, where, we, where we make those type of comments, you know, how'd that happen or, uh, Man, you're lucky. That that type of thing. It, it's yeah. happened to all of us. Yeah, all of us have done that. You know, and all the time you say it's uh, you know miracles. Yes, that, that we are just not tuned in tune to. Yes, and once you get in tune to what it is, um, you're I think you'll turn into a different person or 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 something along that line. Yes, sir. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else? Anyone else? Go right ahead. I'm no 
know that's happening to somebody. Somebody is it's happening more than just me. I I know God's doing a, a a lot of miracles because if He doesn't sleep and He doesn't slumber, that means he, He's busy. I'm sorry, I'm Go trying ahead. to juggle in with these kids here at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, I got me a busy bunch. Yeah, yeah, they so precious. They so precious. Yeah, um, you know, we 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 really in a time of great wonders, great miracles, and opportunity for great wonders and great miracles. And as you say, you understand, we're not sensitive to what's going on around us. And the move that God is making because a lot of people are so caught up in politics and different things. You understand? And, you know, just today I'm reading um, Daniel chapter. Ja Excuse me, I'm on the phone. Uh, yeah. Wait, let's have Bible study with Pastor. We're going to say Bible study with Pastor. All right. I'm sorry. It's mommy's face, Pastor. Well, ask mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah. So I got everybody here. Nogi. Dealing with. Um. No. So no. when we uh we looking no. at, at at a time where there's so much so many different um signs and wonders going on even in the midst of this miracle in in, in the midst of this um this this pandemic we see so much signs and so much wonders happening okay i'm on the phone all right here sit over here and share with gideon so you got some wonders going on there i'm sorry yeah <laughs> So the smaller one, um, hijacking the bigger one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what? When we look at. That's why I'm sorry. That's why I was trying not to sign out with all the distractions. So I apologize. Um. But when we look at what's going on in the world today, we we gotta know that we we we're witnessing the times when when the um disciples were there. And because even in 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 legislation, there are legislation passing daily against the church, and our voice needs to be as Stephen, even though they they, they were he, they, 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 he know that he was going to be stoned to death, he speak the word of God straight to the end. And we have to be the same same way too, you know. And we have to speak the word of God. And we find in this time, like more and more and more, the enemy is changing the the words and the times and the seasons in the Bible. And little little changes slowly taking places in the Bible that we that allows us to ignore what is what the Bible is saying about the times that we're in. So we got to be more diligent in studying and in the word and getting deeper into the word and understanding and allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with, them, with us, you know, and just to keep on getting into the word of God because the word, thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. So the, the disciples live by the word of Jesus Christ. They preach the word of Jesus Christ. They, they, they sing, they sleep Jesus Christ. Uh, we have to do the same thing too. And we have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life. And once you sense it, in order to be sensitive to what's going on, the signs and the wonders, you got to be sensitive to the Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm and not be like the churches like some of the churches in revelation where you know people are not sensitive to the spirit they 
there's a lack of the, a spiritual move in the church all over. You understand? There's a lack of the spiritual move in the church. But God, God, God is about to light the fire and spark it <laughs> with a generation, <laughs> an unexpected generation. So, yeah. Just want to share that. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Anyone else? Anyone else? Go right ahead. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. So I want to uh, want to encourage you to uh, look over chapter seven in preparation for uh, for next week. Uh, I want to encourage you to tune in on Sunday morning at e at eleven a.m. for our service. Again, if you have not uh, turned in your your favorite uh, Bible verse video clip, I want to encourage you to go ahead and join with us in it. If you can assist in spreading the word and getting some others, we are uh, a little over the halfway point, and I think we're up to like 40. We need about 60. Need about 60 more uh, to uh, to meet our goal by the end of the month of having 100. My favorite. Bible verse. Again, we are making this appeal all over the country with different people uh, in an effort to uh, complete this project. So if you can help me uh, in getting some other folks to send us some uh, video, 30-second uh, video clips in of their favorite verse, we very much, very much appreciate it. We'll like to give a report next week uh, saying that we are in the 77th 70s to 80s or somewhere in that area as we get closer to the end of this month. Again, want to encourage you all to keep the Robinson uh, family in prayer. Uh, his, his wife, uh, Ms. Colleen, is uh, in the Cleveland Clinic with a uh, blood clog in her uh, lungs and her leg. And, uh, and so we are, we are praying for uh, God's supernatural touch of her body, as well as want to keep her her father in prayer. They've given him a few days. He's on a ventilator, uh, I believe, somewhere up in Palm Beach County. Um, uh, we are praying uh, for God's healing. God's healing. God is able. When man says it's, it's over, uh, God says it's not over. So we want to be... Uh, Want to keep keep them lifted up. We've been praying for them. Want to keep them lifted up in in prayer, and and there are many others. I'm sure each one of you can name a list of individuals that need a supernatural supernatural touch from God, and we want to encourage you to continue to hold them and lift them up in prayer. So we're gonna to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm gonna have a uh, my dear brother, uh, brother Bobby, if you would close us out, if you can close us out uh, this evening in prayer as we, uh, you know, continue to pray one for another, continue to pray one for another. Brother Bobby, go right ahead, please. Sorry, I had to get back on. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving our sins. And we're asking you to forgive our sins and blot out all of our transgressions. We want to ask you, Lord, to pray for all of those who are sick with this COVID-19 virus. It is not of you, God. And we're asking you, Lord, to put a damper on it, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will rebuke it and send it back to the depths of hell from whence it came. We want to ask your forgiveness for our sins. Lord, we want to ask your protection on the highways and byways and airways as we travel to and fro from work, at home, and to wherever we have to go. Because we need you right now, God. We need you right now. We want to bless all of bless our church, bless our our moms and our dads, our cousins, brothers, sisters, bless them right now. We need it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're going to ask you, God, that you protect 
the little ones, Lord, the little ones that's being shot needlessly in our communities, our own black communities, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, put a damper on it. Put a damper on it, Lord. Intervene, Lord. Touch the minds, some of these minds, God, in the name of Jesus, that's doing these things. Prevent them, Lord, from creating these acts of violence in our communities, not just at home, but abroad. We want to pray for our leaders, the president on down. Although we may not be his fav be a favorite of his, but we need he needs prayer as well. Yeah. Not just from the from him, but all of those from the top to the bottom needs our needs your prayer, needs yes. our prayers. Yes. God. Heal this country. We yes. need it right now. Desperately, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Again, God bless you all. Have a blessed week. What's left of it? Continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Continue to plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, over your household, over all those in your sphere of influence. God bless you all. Have a blessed evening. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.